So Intel Core Ultra is here now. You might be wondering, should I be getting it? Should I not be getting it? You know, is it good? Is it not good? And if you haven't seen my benchmark videos for the Core Ultra 9 or the 5 or the 7 or some other bits on the channel yet, then uh, you're in a good place because in this video, I'm going to give you seven reasons why you should and five reasons why you shouldn't choose the Core Ultra 200S series. Let's talk. This part of the video is brought to you by Trix Panorama, the world's first CPU cooler with curved L-shaped AMOLED screen. It's not just for good looks though, the cooling is amazing. Go check out our video how we were able to overclock the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K with this exact cooler and that was not even maxing the cooling performance. Go check out our hands-on and cooling performance with the panorama in the video description below. So the reasons why you should get the Intel Core Ultra first. Number one, if you are an Intel fanboy, then click on that link and buy the Core Ultra right now. Okay, don't don't think about it. Just, just go and do it. If you want to support Intel, go for it. Number two, if you are on 11th gen or older than 12th gen, then I would say that probably the Core Ultra is a good option because that's the point where you're getting a massive upgrade in terms of a lot of things like IO, core count, CPU performance, RAM support and everything. Then that kind of makes sense. Your storage can go faster. You'll get a huge performance upgrade in your CPU, like single and multi car you'll absolutely love it even if you go from i9 11th gen to i5 core ultra there's a huge performance difference like night and day if you are on a later than 11th gen stick around for the other reasons why you shouldn't number three if you're looking for better connectivity you see when the intel core ultra the connectivity and how you transfer you know bandwidth between io usb ports or thunderbolt or pcie it has massively actually changed even from 12th gen because now we've got thunderbolt 5 support we've got much better io if you need thunderbolt then that's obviously supported only kind of an intel usb 4 is on amd as well but as a great date sometimes those make sense number four if you'd like harder acceleration for some of your video codec playback now the good news is that now the core 200 S Ultra CPU iGPU actually supports the new Sony's XAVC H, AK, and 4K codec, which is H.265 10-bit 422 codec. And if you're on AMD or Threadripper or some older Intel platforms that doesn't support that and you need the hardware acceleration and you don't want to render proxies, then this is a good reason why you might want to move to 200S Core Ultra Series. Number five, we have more efficient and cooler PC performance. Now, when I've been testing the Core 200S Ultra, it is actually very, very cool and quiet. It runs a lot lower temperatures and pulls actually less wattage. Now, the wattage you can push to quite high, but it is definitely more efficient than the previous generation. I'd probably go even as far as saying that it is more efficient than even the 12th gen, which looked like quite efficient compared to 11th gen. But Intel is doing something new with the Core Ultra 200S series. They are trying to build a whole new architecture and roadmap to get the efficiency down and give you more performance per watt, which always is a good idea, I think. Maybe that's important to you in a hot climate where, for example, running some of the high-end CPUs that pull a lot of watts, like even the 4900K, you might want to go with this one. This might make sense to you. Number six, overclocking performance and insane RAM speed. Mark my words, Intel Core Ultra 200S will be the first series of CPUs where we're actually passing the 10,000 megahertz RAM speed. That's 10 gigahertz RAM speeds, which is ridiculous. But it's possible because of the memory controller, but also Intel's little kind of smart shenanigans with some of the memory manufacturers. And they're now putting their memory controller also on the RAM stick. Now it's called not UDIM, but CUDIM. And that C probably stands for controller, which essentially just means that now the controller or the memory controller on the RAM stick is much closer to the actual RAM chips 
and it runs in sync with the CPU. And if the CPU can't run it as fast, we have a dedicated chip on the CPU, which makes it run faster and more stable, which is good news. I haven't seen any of the studio yet. So the availability is a little bit of a question mark when they're going to come out, but I've seen some other people have it out there. They're rolling out slowly and they'll be more popular. I think very soon the CU dim will overtake just a normal U dim because it'll just be more stable and, you know, better. Number seven, if you want more PCA lanes, Intel doesn't mention that a lot, but the new Call to 200S series actually has 24 PCA lanes, not 20 like it was on the previous generation. So now you can run your GPU X16 all PCA Gen 5, one M.2, second M.2 all PCA Gen 5, plus the extra lanes that we get from the chipset. If that is important to you, Gen 5 storage, Gen 5 GPU, and so on, then the Call to 200S might be worth it for you. At the same time, AMD has had 24 PCIe Gen 5 lanes since Ryzen 7000. Now, what about the downsides and why you shouldn't buy the Core Ultra 200S series, especially as a creator? Number one, the best bank for buck. If you're looking the best performance for every dollar you've got, this is not the CPU for you because a few reasons. If you're looking for the best bank for buck, PC builds as a creator, there are build guides in the video description below on every single video on the channel and there's smart links. So whichever video you're going to click on, you can click on that link in the video description below and that will take you to the latest video, whenever that has been published, the latest one that's relevant to you whenever you're watching this, no matter when the video was published, but when you are watching this. So you can be sure that all those build guides will just help you and give you the best bank for buck money. And I was right when making the 12th gen, 13th gen and 14th gen recommendation a few months ago, because now you can see after the performance benchmarks that that was the best bank for buck option. So that's what I would go, not the Call to 200S series. Number two, if you're on 12th gen and you're thinking, I'm going to skip 13th, 14th gen and go for the Core Ultra, I wouldn't do that. The better upgrade option for you, if you're already on the LGA 1700 socket, is to just go with 14 900K or 900KS. It'll be a much better bank for buck spent rather than going with a new motherboard. It's going to be more expensive and you're not necessarily getting that much more performance. So if I was you on 12th gen, 13th gen, 14th gen, just maximize the LGA 1700 platform on your upgrades. Third reason why you shouldn't go for the 200S series, if you are on the 14th gen and you're expecting a massive performance gain on the Core Ultra 200S series. Now, to break it to you plainly, you're gonna get up to 10% increase in some of the synthetic rendering benchmarks maybe Blender and some of V-Ray maybe, and you know, Cinebench, you're getting that much. But actual photo and video editing applications, honestly, you will not be able to tell the difference or notice the difference between the 14 900K and Call to 200S 285K, the best of the previous generations. There is such a marginal increase between the two generations, which kind of makes you think, you know, the Moore's law about 10% increase different generations. We're really stretching it to see this as a 10% increase in just pure performance for video and photo editing as a creator. If you want to know more and see how much you're actually getting performance gain, go check out my core ultra reviews about the, you know, ultra five, ultra seven and ultra nine. Fourth reason why you shouldn't is the upgradeability and the future path of this platform. Now, Intel has notoriously been the two generations of CPUs per platform. So you will most likely have the core ultra 300 S CPU upgrade for this platform not more. If they're going to stretch it, you might get a third one like we had on the LGA 1700. We get the 14th gen as well as 13th and 12th gen, but that's really it. So you're probably looking about two, three years maximum of the platform age that it is, you know, still alive. Now, AMD, on the other hand, is supported its platform a lot longer. At the same time, not necessarily as many upgrades per platform, because if you look at the Ryzen 7000 and Intel's LGH 1700, then there's been a few Intel upgrades where AMD has just still been on one. So there was 12th gen, then AMD released their Ryzen 7000, then there was 13th gen, and then there was 14th gen. So Intel's released three generations and AMD still had only one Ryzen 7000. 
Then they came out with Ryzen 9000 to compete with the 14th gen. And then now Intel's out with the Core Ultra 200S. And I believe Intel's gonna have next generation as well before AMD is gonna have their Ryzen 10 thousand series or they might start it again with something you know ryzen ai ultra something like that most likely that's what's gonna happen change the naming again and confuse it and start again that's a great idea number five if you want stability new platforms often come with a few questions a few things that may be not working so well driver issues software issues compatibility and so on now i believe the core ultra 200 s series is not as bad as 12th gen because 12th gen was a huge thing we had ddr5 ddr4 both of them working at the same time the whole hybrid architecture that was all new now we don't have that many new things but i still have noticed a few little quirks and issues that aren't perfectly ironed out for the new series yet if you're a creator and you want the best stability always better to go with the last generation you'll get it not just cheaper but also more stable performance reason number six is that if you're thinking that your Core Ultra 200S is special because it plays back some of these codecs, hardware acceleration, finally, Sony XAVC H playback, we can get hardware acceleration. The bad news is, or good news actually, at the same time as well, is that this same feature is supported on all of the Intel CPU iGPUs from 11th gen. So if you're on 11600K, 12, 13, 14th gen, they will all be supported and it's not going to be any special on the Core 200S Ultra series. So perhaps going with a previous generation and checking out the build guides in the video description below, you get the same result, but pay less. That's what I would do. And that's the pluses and minuses. If I missed out anything, I'm going to find them out in the comment section below. I'm sure you're going to help me out. I'll meet you down there. Thanks guys. Bye bye.